classic example of a in judo theory, Hondo no Kazushi. So we're going to do it off just like a classic cross body. So we take the step and you, you hook the far leg and the idea is that you're going to drive through and uh, sweep with the leg. But if he's seen that, he can step off that, that hook. Now normally people would put their foot down and they'd back off. But as soon as he steps off that hook, we're going to do sumigaishi. And this is a nice setup for sumi gaishi. Sumi gaishi means corner reverse direction. So I'm coming from a corner at an angle, and then I'm reversing direction and throwing them the other way. That's sumi gaishi, corner counter direction, counter roll, and that's what it means. This is a real good uh, uh, way to apply it. It's a way to set them up. We're going to set them up with a oh, so the guard, right? So, real quick, uh, and also as a word of warning, when you're doing sacrifice throws, be sure when you finish them, like in a competition in a tournament, you want to keep rolling. You don't want to end up on your back and let the referee try to figure out who threw who. Okay? So, you know, there are times you want to do a sumigation, there are times you are sacrifice type te technique, there are the times you don't. Okay? So, um, be that aware. What we're going to show you is how to finish the throw and keep rolling as he does it. And I'm going to have him show this first. And then we're going to parse it apart, and so you can see it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so um, especially if somebody has seen you do it before, this works very well. If they, you just kind of screw it up, it, it works, your first throw at least, it works pretty well. Um, so we're going to do it off just like a classic cross body. So we take the step and you, you hook the far leg, and the idea is that you're going to drive through and uh, sweep with the leg. But if he's seen that, he can step off that, that hook. Now normally people would put their foot down and they'd back off, but as soon as he steps off that hook, so just a little hop through. Um, and we'll, we'll start with this and then we'll add one little minor detail to, to tighten up your footwork, okay? So you don't have to do the hop. But catch. And again, I didn't stop after the throw. I kept the hold of the grip the whole way through and I use that to turn back through and finish the pin so that there's absolutely no doubt who got thrown there. Now, like we were saying, this is the key that unlocks the door on this. Okay, let me use your body just a second. Look, Derek got this grip. Okay, and here's the grip. Everybody can see this grip? He's got kind of a back grip here on this part of the body, this back. Okay, if he tried this on the lapel, it probably wouldn't work very well. So you've got to, and again, I use this, Derek and the guys are tired of me hearing it, saying it, uh, they're tired of hearing it. It's like you're wrapping a belt over his body or a, a, or a rope, looping him in. Catch here and elbow down. Don't let your elbow float, elbow down. The other hand is on the sleeve. Okay, so I've got this and there's the set. And that's, that's how I can get that cross body of Soto really well. And he steps out of it. But that sets it up, that grip sets it up because what that does is what we call killing the shoulder. You're beating his shoulder here. What you're doing is driving it, you're rounding it out so he, has, he can't put his hand out and stop it. You're, you're steering him with that hand, and like I said, it kills the shoulder. It, it takes the integrity away. He's no longer square, okay? Um, so if, if I was going to finish through with killing that shoulder, you know, that helps you guide him through the throw and finish. When I'm going backwards with the sumi gaishi, Okay. This allows me to pull in more, and even in, with both of them, it because I can go shoulder to shoulder, it's a lot easier for me to enter than if I had my grip out here. Okay, so I'm able to kill this arm on and this grip on this side, enter in a lot quicker. He steps out, and when I hop in, okay, now I start pulling this shoulder. And then as we kick through, it's a very easy to turn over at that point. Um, Another thing to remember is after you hop in, so once your foot is here, it's just basically a turnaround, okay? Don't try and make a big, huge hop. He's not that far away, okay? Little hop there, sit straight down on your heel, okay? Straight down, and that allows you to push off your back foot and then kick. And I've already pulled his shoulder down, so his head's already going, okay? If I 
hop in and I don't sit straight down, I sit back, okay? Hop in, sit back, and then I lose my kick and I lose my drive and then he tripods out, okay? And then again, there's ways that you can try and, and follow through from it, but you're probably not gonna get very He's laying on his out. back, the referee's probably called the score for the other guy. Right, I already got two points. Right. Yeah, you already got the points for the throw, oh, that sucks. So what you want to do is keep turning and then a little hop. You got to stay round. We say all the time, you got to stay round. This is what Derek's doing. So let's take a look at this kick. Okay. Catch a hop. Sit straight down. Kick and drive up. Back foot. Roll over. Okay. That way, when you finish in this Sutimi Waz or the sacrifice throw, you're not finishing on your back. You're rolling over onto your opponent, and that's how the finish. The momentum carries you through. Keep those grips. It's a, it makes it super easy for you to be able to follow your momentum and yeah. pull yourself into the pin. You're steering with your hands, in other words. Look at the back view of this, how he comes in. So see? Now use the hands to steer. That, those are key things. You got that. This is a really good, good sacrifice throw. You know, Tactically, sometimes a sacrifice throw isn't always the best thing to do, you know? So, but this case, this has a higher rate of success for getting a score yeah. than sometimes it's like a straight to Moanagi or something. Not that they're bad, some people are really good at it, but this one is, is really effective. You, you've gotten a good reaction out of him from the first throw because he's stepped out. So at the very least, even if he's not bent over, which would be great, um, he, he's wide. So that allows you to get in under his hips and flip him over pretty easily. Whereas if I just took this grip and I immediately, you know, like, he still has an opportunity to get out of that, right? I, I want to actually force him to step off and get him balanced and open. In judo theory, this works on what's called hondo no kazushi, a reaction, kazushi or breaking the balance, controlling the balance based on your opponent's reaction. So the reaction is this, he tries the Osoto, he steps away, he creates an opening, time for sumigation. So it's a classic example of a in judo theory, Hondo no Kazushi. So just for you geeks like me, I love that stuff. So, yeah. All right, we good? Let's give it a go.